What's up guys, it's your boy Connor coming at you with a helmet shootout. What do we have here? We have two of the heavy hitters in the motorcycle game. Sort of, kind of, there's still also the showy and the rye and a couple other ones, but these are the ones I get asked the most about. I've run through my fair share of helmets. I started off with a Harley Davidson one. You know, they're all full face helmets that I've ran. I, when I was first starting, I almost went with the half shell. Then I said, no, it's kind of dumb. Ended up going with the full face. Started off with the Harley. Then we ended up going with the Scorpion. And it's still my current Moto Vlog helmet. Then we went with the Bill Lane Splitter. Shortly after, we went ahead with the Bell Race Star and the Simpson Outlaw Bandit. Now, what is the difference? What's going to be the selling point? It all depends to what you are looking for in a helmet and the overall design and aesthetics of what you're really looking for. Whether you be in it for aggressive look and the Bell Race Star is similar, but has more of an aerodynamic profile, kind of more for the three quarter to the full tuck position, more for the kind of like the sport bike, etc. cetera. Uh, but they've been slowly kind of transitioning into the cruiser realm. But when it all comes down to it, they're both solid helmets. Some of the points that we're gonna be hitting home on is gonna be the overall price, some of the features that come with it, and then some of the difference between a higher model or lower end model, et cetera. Kind of like where you have the Simpson Outlaw Bandit here, you also have the Ghost Bandit, which you would dish out an additional $100. And it comes with small different features, some of the differences between the two, and then some of the experience I've had with the previous helmets, but mostly con concentrating on these two. Now, what helmet do you currently run? What's something that you look for when you were looking at a helmet? Price is gonna play a major part in the decision on what helmet you're gonna run with. So, diving right in, we're gonna to touch base on the Simpson Outlaw Bandit. Simpson has a long background in racing and producing quality helmets. They are based out of New Braunfels, Texas, so that's a major plus for them. Go Simpson, yeah! And as for the visor, the, one of the changes from the 2016 and previous models to the 17, which we have here, is going to be the visor has click stops. I don't know the exact name for it, but that's what we're gonna call it, click stops, to where you have some control of where you want it. So say if you're riding and you can choose to where if you want half open, fully open, and it's gonna keep it in that position to where previous years or like the Bitwell Lane Splitter, after so much time, it's only gonna end up just closing. But this kind of helps prevent that. You have a little button latch here on the side that's gonna secure the visor when it's down and you can hear it click and there it is to prevent it from flying up. Simpson helmets come with Velcro padding on the cheek pads. It makes it extremely easy to remove them as also to exchange them. Now, should you find yourself in the kind of awkward, weird limbo of finding yourself between sizes, Simpson also includes a slightly smaller cheek pad. So now we change gears to the Bell Raystar Rolling Sands Chief Edition. Out the gate, it's gonna be priced. These come in around $6.99, depending on which collaboration, which choice helmet you choose for the Raystar. Now, when it comes to the Bell helmets, you have the Bell Qualifier, and then you start coming into the Star family. You have the Bell Star, you have the Bell Race Star, and then the Bell Pro Star, which is gonna be the $1,000, pretty much fully geared towards the track. That's all you're doing, you're crushing corners, racing away. And then this one's kind of more the prosumer. And so now, this is one of the collaborations with Roland Sands. I believe there's two other designs, including this one, making it for a total of three. You also have the other option for the Ace Cafe London, and then I believe there's one other, and then you have the general variations of color. This helmet, according to some, is going to be geared towards the three quarter of the full tuck position. I really enjoy this helmet. We're gonna to touch base on it. It's going to be because of the wind buffeting or the complete lack thereof. That's the first thing I really noticed, uh, other than the extremely tight fit. Some people say that whenever you order this helmet, you're gonna to wanna to order a size up because this was a tight fit. This was a, a snug. I felt like my head wasn't gonna go anywhere, but it was a rough break-in. But now, switching gears, we're gonna continue talking about that, is the, the helmet is DOT and Snell approved. One of the few main features that sets this apart from the star is going to be you have the virus cool jade mesh liner. And what that's gonna do is gonna give you a couple degrees of cooling to where it's also antimicrobial and it's almost like a wicking feature to where with the scorpion, I can be roaming around, it's hot, I can take my helmet on and off. But whenever I really start sweating in that helmet on the scorpion, it's going to be, it's, it feels pretty disgusting when I put it on because I can just feel the sweat. It just, just feels dirty like I'm putting it on. With this, this is not the case. It's the exact opposite to where it's cooling. It feels good. It doesn't feel like I've been sweating through the whole helmet. It gets hot in Texas, so that's a major, major plus. Now, the other thing is gonna be more on the safety aspect, to where it has a flex impact liner, and then what that's gonna do is going to cover your three major zones of impact, or your three major impacts. It covers you on the low, medium, and high impact collisions, 
to where the technology inside, we're not gonna get too much into it, but to where it covers angular collisions. The Bell Raystar has really become my go-to helmet. I find myself wearing this more often, more times than not. The Simpson is great for, let's just be real, for the Insta Post. It just does a great job. It looks so awesome. If I'm walking around or doing something on my bike, it just looks so wicked. I get tons of compliments when I'm wearing the Outlaw Bandit. Got a couple compliments on this one, but not quite like the Outlaw Bandit. Now, when it comes to summertime, I'm gonna go ahead and say the Simpson looks great, but it is pretty damn hot in it. The Bell Raystar has lots of vents to give you lots of options if you wanna get lots of wind. Plus the Jade Mesh lining on the inside does a great job of keeping your face cool. You take off your helmet, it feels nice and cool when you put it back on. The Simpson, you just totally feel sweaty. I really do enjoy riding with my visor open a lot. With the Bell Raystar, with it just being open or closed, and it having such a high profile whenever I'm riding with the visor open, if I get anything above 55 miles an hour, it starts to shake and I'm afraid that it's just gonna rip off with the shield being pretty expensive. I'd rather just close it. So I run with it closed most of the time. Occasionally at stoplights, I'll open it. I do like the profile or the, the field of view on the Bell Raystar, but with the Simpson Outlaw Bandit, I really enjoy the clicks to where if I wanna have it fully open, it's nice. We start running at little higher speeds, I can bump it down and I enjoy it like that, or we can just completely close it. The downside to the Simpson Outlaw is going to be that the venting on the helmet is gonna be here on the side of the chin of the mouth port, and there is no vent on the rear of the helmet to where air can come in, air can't really escape. So you get a couple hot zones inside the helmet, mostly being along the brow, and then maybe here on the rear portion of the head. But there is a little bit more wind buffeting on the Simpson helmet compared to the Race Star. So now talking about fitment, you have a little bit more of a higher profile here in the rear. And um, as for the fitment, it's a little tight here in the cheeks, but break it in, give it some time. I suggest that whenever you do first get it, maybe try riding with it uh, for an hour here and there because when I did start riding it, it was pretty tight. And after about an hour and a half, I would start to feel a little, couple pressure points along my temple. It would give me a slight headache. So I would go ahead and take it off. The braking period's not bad. Uh, and I do like it running with the Bluetooth on the Cena because with it being such a quiet helmet, I do enjoy that, that I can hear the music a whole lot better as compared to the Simpson Outlaw Bandit. And so now we have the Simpson Outlaw Bandit. It's a little bit lower profile in the rear, but it just looks more aggressive in the front. And when it comes to the space in the front of the mouth is you don't have much. I can feel my, if I kind of do duck lift, I can touch the interior lining of the helmet. But visor is super easy to open and close. Uh, it takes a little bit of minutes to get used to kind of opening it on one little tab instead of the center. But I mean, maybe after like 10 minutes, you're good to go. Well guys, that's gonna do it for this video. Appreciate y'all checking it out. Let me know what y'all think. What helmet y'all run? What helmet are y'all looking at? What's your dream helmet? Do you currently run a Simpson Outlaw Bennett or do you currently run a Bell Race Star? And as y'all know, I recently made a Patreon. Huge thanks to all the patrons already. Y'all are amazing. Y'all did an amazing job. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Here they are. There's another one. Here's another one. Here's one. There's one. Hoo, ha, ha. Everybody was patrons fighting. Hoo.